So now what I'm going to do is cover this one right here from DF. He says, he or she says, let me see if you guys can read. I don't know if, if that's big enough. So it says, hi, I'm going through an upgrade of an operating system and I'm wondering what controls will be impacted, impacted the most because we need to gather artifacts. That, that means evidence for an assessment. Okay. This is, this is a great question. This is a great question. This is so great that I actually prepared a little slide for this one. I like this one because this is one that you worry about as a risk management framework person. All right, so here we go. Here, what you're looking at here is the NIST 800 process, the NIST 837 risk management framework process. And so for this person asking, they're changing their operating system what controls do they need to go through? And the, the answer is all of them. I know you're like, what are you talking? What do you mean all of them? You got to go through all of them. And let me explain. So when you do a major change on a system, you have to go through the process of making sure that the security posture on the system remains the same. And to do that, you have to make sure all the security controls have not been affected by this major change that you've made. Now, the caveat to that is that it's not as hard as you think because most of the controls are not going to change, right? So your physical security controls aren't going to change. Let me just go through these. So the physical, that's PE. Physical security control is not going to change, right? You didn't change locations. If you change locations, then yeah, physical location is probably going to change the physical and environmental protection of the security controls. If you AC controls are probably not going to change because you probably have the same security policy. You probably do things like you still are going to make the accounts the same, right? Unless you're suddenly changing the method of how you create accounts, then that may, you know, the operating system is so drastically different that you have to actually change your process. Then, yeah, maybe that's different. Like maybe you're going from, if you were going from a Windows system, a Windows 2008 system that just had went end of life and you're going to a Oracle system, like you're a database, then yeah, access control might drastically change where you have to change that completely. But if you're going from a Windows 2008 system that went end of life and you went over to a Windows 2012 and it's essentially doing the same thing, but you guys want to move from an end of life system to a system that's going to be, that's going to be supported by Microsoft for the next four or five years or whatever it is, then there's not going to be much of a change. So you're going to go through every one of the controls and most of it won't change. However, there will be things that do change. Those things that change will be mostly technical. Let me explain what I mean by that. So once you have put the new system in place, right, you've applied all the new security controls. Like someone, I don't know if it's you or you're part of your team or you're part of the team that does it, but they're going to implement all the security controls. They're going to put, make sure that the system has the proper encryption, has the proper cert certificates, has the proper connections. If you guys have, a, a, maybe you have a spyware, anti-spyware on there, or you have antivirus on there, that has to go on there. It has to have updated signatures. There's a whole bunch of work that has to be done when you're going through and putting this new operating system in. Once all those things are in there, right, all the the technical controls and I don't know if you have like a document that'll walk you through it or maybe you, you have STIGS security technical implementation guide that's walking you through everything or maybe you have some people have like a script that'll like put everything in there you know one part at a time so you don't lock the system out or something but all that stuff's in there the next step once it's been implemented is to do an assessment on this and that's where we're going through this wheel again right so you didn't have to do categorization because you know the system's going to remain the same. All the same information's going in there. You have pretty much all the same controls. That doesn't change. But you've had to implement the controls again on this operating system, right? And I'm assuming that this system is one of your main systems, right? It's not a side system. It's an asset. It's a, it's a server. So you have to implement all those controls again, which means you've got to reassess those controls. Once you reassess the controls, what happens a lot of times is when you go from one operating system to another operating system is that the new operating system, there's going to be like slight changes where some things won't work the same way anymore. And so that's what you're trying to weed out and make sure that it's working as close as possible to the original security posture. And when I say security posture, it's a, an odd word for 
the same security level that you had before, essentially. So once you've implemented, you've, you've assessed the controls and got them as close as possible to the original, now you're gonna have to go to author, authorizing the system. And this is where it goes to your head of agency. I don't know if it's a colonel or, or CEO or CFO or whoever, CIO or somebody who has to approve the system. And so you've gone through all the security controls. You've validated that the physical security controls didn't change, that the training security controls, the, all the controls didn't change anymore, right? But the technical tro controls did, right? Those, con those controls did change. And those will, ones will affect things like this, like this one might change, identification and authentication. Like when you're putting, when you're putting this one into the system, one of the things that might be affected is like um, how you're logging into the system. It may be slightly different. Another technical control is um, we already talked about AC controls, but that's I'm trying to look for other controls that will be might be affected by encryption might be infected uh, affect infected <laughs> you know it's on my mind sa controls uh system and services acquisition that's dealing with uh how the person purchased the system so that may not that might not be a factor because i'm assuming that you went through all the proper channels to actually get the new operating system on there uh sc controls that's your system and communication protection controls that's where you have your encryption are you using uh, SSL or TLS, TLS 1 or 2 or 3? Which TLS uh, version of TLS are you, are you using on that system? Those are very technical controls that you may see once you run a scan and you're doing the assessment on the system. Once you're doing this, this assessment right here, those things might come up and you'll see that it, it may have changed. But you want, like I said, you want to get them as close as possible. So authorizing the system, that's one thing they're going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at the scans and making sure, okay, is this still the same security level that we had before? Last time we only had, we had no issues with the old legacy system, except that it is, is end of life. But in a new system, we have these different changes technically. So that's, I hope that answers your question. Your question was, what controls... Do I have to worry about if I'm going to a new operating system? And I would say all of them, but the only one you have to validate all of them because you're gonna have to go through the whole. You're gonna have to go through the process again, and somebody's gonna have to authorize the system. But the ones that really change are gonna be the technical controls. And I hope that answers your question. Jay Smith says, but doesn't it depend on what you categorize the system at? Moderate, moderate, low. Oh, you're referring to what we were talking about. It's as far as us going through what controls that you need. I suppose it, it depends on a lot of different things, right? Like it depends on, like if it's a, L, you know, a low system where the impact of the system is very low if the system, if the system goes down and you're changing operating system and the organization states that, okay, we don't want to redo the authorization on the system because it's a low level system. You know, it depends on the environment, depends on a lot of different things. So that's a good point, Jay. Depends on the organization, ultimately. They're, they're, they're the shot callers on that one. 